So we're going to look at a problem having to do with impulse and working with our impulse idea. This is a practice problem out of your set of online problems. It reads, a force in the negative direction on the horizontal axis is applied for 27 milliseconds to a 0.4 kilogram ball. And the ball is moving at an initial speed of 14 meters per second when it experiences this force. And the magnitude, magnitude, so absolute value, just the magnitude of the impulse is 32 kilograms times meters per second. Now this is a varying force. We're dealing with a force that varies. So we're interested in a few things. One, what's the final velocity of that ball? What's the average force? Because it, the force does vary over that 27 milliseconds. And then what is the direction of the impulse? So those three things are what's important. So let's review what impulse is. Impulse, remember, is our change in momentum. And if I'm changing an object's momentum, I'm causing it to change its velocity. Therefore, I'm causing an acceleration over some period of time. And our impulse is also can be considered the force on average that occurs over that period of time. So let's knock out this part C right away, the direction of the impulse. If I know my force is acting in the negative direction, purely horizontally in this particular example, time of course is always positive, then I know that the direction of the impulse has to be negative. So I don't, I not only do I know that the magnitude is 32, but I know the direction is in the negative or the left word, in this case, direction. All right, so let's get number three out of the way, or C. What about the final velocity? Well, we want to keep in mind that impulse is our change in momentum, our final momentum minus our initial momentum. And our momentum, remember, is equal to the mass times the velocity. So our final momentum is going to equal our mass times our final velocity, and our initial momentum will be the mass times the initial velocity. So using that idea for our impulse, we have that our impulse is equal to the mass times the final velocity minus the mass times the initial velocity. And for part one, we want to know what that final velocity is. So we can solve for final velocity. We have impulse. I'm going to pull the masses out. We get V final minus V initial. Divide both sides by the mass. Now, I typically just start plugging in numbers. That's sort of my, my preference. Oh, I try to change it up for a varying learning audience. We get V final minus V initial. We can add V initial to both sides. So the impulse divided by the mass plus the initial velocity is going to give us the final velocity. All right, so let's start plugging in our numbers. We have our impulse of 32, but it is negative. So we have minus 32 divided by my mass of 0 0.4. And then I'm going to add my initial velocity of 14. And I find that my final velocity is equal to plus 14, negative 66 meters per second. All right, so just using and manipulating that impulse relationship. The last part, part B, I guess, is to find the average force. And we're going to keep in mind that our impulse is equal to the average force times time. My impulse of negative 32 is equal, divided by the time of 27 milliseconds, so 0 0.27 is equal to the average force, which is equal to... negative 1185 Newton, so that appropriate direction. All right, that's the average force, the magnitude, which is actually asked for in the problem, of course, is just the size of that force. So working with our impulse relationship in both as a change in momentum and as a force times time. Good job.